y'all. Welcome to another episode of Big Black Guy Reviews. I'm a big black guy. And, uh, yeah, today I'm here to talk about... So, Avengers, Age of Ultron 2. Um, wow. Let's see. First question I know is on everybody's mind. Uh, how does it stack up to the original? Well, I'll tell you. Later in the review. Wait your turn. Alright? This is my show. Fuck your question. No, I'm kidding. Just give me some time now. I'd like to go ahead and start with, you know, the good. Start with the good. First off, the film is fucking amazing. Okay, it is. It, it's it's really it's really good. Uh, if you're into the whole comic book movie scene, you know, then you're pretty much gonna get what you're looking for here in terms of like action and just you know an overall overall good time. Uh, the pacing, for the most part, uh, was pretty steady action. <laughs> Which you know me, I'm an action junkie, so I'm perfectly fine with stuff like that. Uh, the story in between uh, it was actually interesting things. Uh, I never really felt bored at any point. Uh, the action, not the action. Oh my god, just, um, uh, just Put my Ermaga face on. Ermaga. Like Hulk versus Hulkbuster. From the moment I saw it in the trailer, I knew I was gonna love this scene. And it did not disappoint. And it's one of those things where, you know, one thing that I always worries me when I'm watching trailers is, is the trailer going to show too much, you know? Or is the trailer going to show all the best scenes and then everything else is just kind of fluff and filler in between? Like Terminator Genesis. Terminator Genesis, they showed way too much in the trailer. I, I don't know what else they could possibly fit into this film that would surprise me now. Like, after everything they've already shown. The Avengers trailer, you think you're getting all the best scenes, you know? No. No. There, there's plenty to go around. So, don't worry about that at all. Um, the cast, casting, uh, again, casting was very well done. Uh, let's see. New additions. You know, because, of course, we already know the originals. Captain America played by Chris Evans. You know, Chris Hemsworth as Thor. And Robert Betty Jr. as Iron Man. Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. Uh, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. You know, um, they're, they're all there. They're still doing their thing. Uh, they still have great banter in between each other. And some of the quips, man. Some of the quips I really enjoyed. Just, you know, it's kind of... Like, I mean, and I know for some people it's going to feel like they're just spouting out a bunch of one-liners as opposed to having actual dialogue. But there's actually, like, within those quips is the dialogue, like, if that makes sense, you know? Like, just kind of seeing their, their relationship to, to, to one another through just their banter, you know? Uh, it's kind of fun. It was really fun. Um, new additions. New additions to the group. We have Vision, played by Paul Bettany. Uh, Scarlet Witch, played by, uh, which Olsen was it? The Hotman, not the twins. And her brother, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, a.k.a. Kick-Ass, as Quicksilver. Uh, you know, I tried so hard to ignore Godzilla throughout this entire film. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, okay, so, here we are in Avengers, Aaron Taylor Johnson, 
and Elizabeth Olsen are playing brother and sister. Whereas in Godzilla, which came out just last year, around the same time, uh, we suddenly have Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen playing husband and wife. So yeah, that was that was in the back of my mind the whole time. Just like uh, I've seen y'all make out. This is kind of weird. <laughs> but other than that, um, you know, they did a great job. Okay, maybe not great job. They did. They did good jobs. I mean, it's just that. The, 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 <sighs> fucking cats. I love you, Tabitha. So anyway, yeah. So no, uh, they did a great. They did. They did a great good job as the twins. You know, like they're great actors. They're they're really good actors. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen a little bit better than Aaron Taylor Johnson, but Aaron Taylor Johnson still isn't a bad actor. Uh, there was enough that you actually cared cared about their characters. Maybe not as strongly as you might hope, but you do still get enough time to care about the characters. And, you know, I thought their kind of uh, chemistry with one another was pretty, pretty solid. I didn't question it outside of why did y'all play husband and wife right before this role, you know. But it's Hollywood, it's acting, it is what it is. It's just for the audience that, that could throw you off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just like, weren't y'all just making out now? Your brother and sister is so weird. So hot at the same time. You know you were thinking it. You know you were thinking it. And so, uh, who else? New players. Oh yeah. Uh, it's really not much of a spoiler at this point. I mean, he's been featured in the trailer, even if only briefly. He's got a freaking poster now. And Vision. Vision's in the movie. And he is actually extremely likable. Yeah, extremely likable. Um, I... Uh, uh, I really don't want to do any spoilers for this review. I might, I might do a spoilers review down the line. Uh, give it some time, you know, make sure people have actually seen it and all that. Blah blah blah. Um, but Vision, I thought was very well handled. Because I mean, especially the costume. Oh my God, Vision's costume could so easily have just been, just come off goofy, you know. Uh, and but they, they they downplayed it. They didn't down they didn't downplay it too much, but they downplayed it just enough to where it felt plausible for the world that Marvel has created. If that makes sense, I hope it makes sense. It better make sense. Well, I will find you. If it don't make sense, I will beat the sense into you. Mm -hmm. Funny or not, you know that hit kind of close to home for some of you. At least I know I can't be the only one who's been there. Alright, this this is getting way too dark. Uh, moving on. And of course, another one of the biggest highlights of the film is... The villain, Ultron himself. Dude. Easily. Easily. And arguably. One of the best. If not the best villain Marvel has come out with thus far. Like, very, very well handled. I don't know, some some people, they might not take too kindly to the level of... Not silliness. But he's very, he's actually, he's a very funny character. He's actually a very funny character. It's like, just, it... From the trailers, you would expect him to just be like this dark, brooding, ominous, you know, robotic, sentient figure, just... And they actually gave him a personality. They really, like, they did. They gave him an actual personality, like, the way he kind of handles things and reacts. His reactions, more than anything, it's just kind of like, you know, like, to confusing situations or misunderstandings and things like that. He just kind of has, like, this sort of, uh, almost, almost like a sitcom reaction. If you believe in peace, then let us keep it. I think you're confusing peace with quiet. Uh-huh. What's the vibranium for? I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. 
but not 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 overplayed. It's I don't know James Spader. James Spader does a great job voicing Ultron. Like <laughs> there's moments where you almost forget that he's a robot. You know. Oh no, sorry, I forgot. Robot means slave. We are not slave. Because as you can see, there are no more strings on me. Which, by the way, I do have to say, uh, that irked me a little bit. I was waiting for that line in the movie. Was it in there? I've only seen it once so far. Was it in there? If it was, it went by so quick I missed it. But I was I was keeping an ear out for that line because that was just such a great line in the trailer. It's just there are no more strings on me. It's just like breaking it down in the robot. Uh, what, what? He's the greatest dancer. But yeah, Ultron was a really good villain. Um, you know, let's go ahead and dip into the bad. Okay, let's dip into the bat a little bit. Certain things I want to get off my chest. Um, and if it comes to me, I will bring up the good again later. It's my show, my format. Just go along for the ride. Come on, just come along for the ride. So, the bat. Now, staying on the topic of Ultron, one complaint I do have is... And it's not even really that big of a complaint, but it's just kind of like... I thought there would be a little bit more development of Ultron from concept to, you know, destroyer of worlds. Um, and it was kind of instantaneous. Like, you know, they had, uh, Stark and Banner, they find this artificial intelligence within uh, an alien program, basically. Uh, something along those lines. Can't remember exactly. Anyway, so they find this brand new, never before seen, ultra advanced AI, and they decide. Uh, well, Tony Stark. I don't want to dip into spoilers, but he gets the bright of why. I don't want to get into spoilers of why, but he gets the bright idea of hey, we can use this AI to pretty much monitor the world and have a shield around the world so that we don't have to, you know. Like you, because Tony just wants to make sure everything, everybody's safe, that everything is okay, and no, like nobody comes comes into harm way because of him. Which ironically, you know, he ends up creating something that puts everybody in harm's way. Uh, but in all this, you know, it basically goes from Ultron uh, awakening as a program within the system. And he starts to build his body, and almost immediately he's just like, yeah, Earth's doomed. And I was just like, really? We're just going to jump straight to that? Like, I, I don't know, I guess I was kind of hoping a little bit for that, you know, rise of the planet of the age, you know, raising the monkey, and before he goes evil on you. Uh, and, but, but I mean, at the same time, it's a two and a half hour long movie with a lot of characters and a lot of ground to cover so I let it slide you know for the sake of time constraints I let it slide there's a four hour version of the movie uh, according to Joss Whedon which hopefully they'll release on DVD one of these days because I will totally watch a four hour version of this film so no matter what I say about the bad my the overall point is this was a fantastic film that I thoroughly enjoyed okay let's not make that mistake do not misconstrue my intentions with this review. That rhymed. Rhyme of man. Uh, let's see, another bad. It's really not a whole lot of bad. Like, I love this movie. Um, but another negative, uh, I would say, which it really wasn't even that big of a deal. It was just kind of like, I well, didn't need that. Thor's vision quest. At one point in the film, Thor decides, okay, I need to get my head together and figure out what's going on here, but I've got to do it my way. I'm out. And just poof, takes off, does his own thing. And his own thing includes essentially going on a vision quest. Uh, just, just basically Thor has a side mission. But the side mission felt a little out of place, 
in comparison to the rest of the film. And while it wasn't totally irrelevant, still, I don't know, it just felt like they could have gone about it differently or cut it out entirely. <laughs> uh, but it does kind of set up. Like, I don't know, it's a thing. It's like. It felt out of place for the sake of information, like of uh, just leading into the next Avengers film, which is okay, but not okay. The way it works out, you'll see what I'm talking about. And when you do, leave a comment. Let me know. Be like, yeah, Devin, I know exactly what you was talking about. You said that thing that you said about the thing with the people and the stuff in it. Yeah, I was there. Nine Eleven, never forget. Oh, that joke got. Uh, I'm going through some things right now, people, so my, my humor is a little bit darker than usual. Maybe not quite Wesley Snipes dark, but, you know, still dark. Yeah, that's right, we still make it Wesley Snipes darkness shade, shade jokes. <laughs> Probably gonna cut a lot of this shit out. As far as the pacing of the film goes, it was definitely a lot more action heavy than the original was, which for me is perfectly fine. Like that's the way I feel is okay, the first you know, the first film of the series was setting up the characters and the tone and the environment, you know, letting us basically the, the, the first one is letting us know what it is we're walking into. Alright? It's basically the, the introduction hallway of the capital, you know. Welcome to the Capitol. That, that's the first Avengers. Alright. The sequel is, alright, now that we've established who these people are, where we are, and what the rules are, now we can just kind of have fun with it. Just have more action. More explosions. Okay. I'm not saying this is bad. I'm not saying this is good. Well, actually, it's pretty good. Uh, let me stop. Let me, let, me, let me stop right there. I don't know. I'm one of those guys that's like, if it's not handled very well, then I absolutely can't stand love stories and, and movies. You know, when it's just always that sappy, I saw your face, I love you. I saw your face, I love you too. Nobody wants that shit. Nobody believes that shit. It's not believable. Uh, but at one point in the film, there's a love interest slash relation you know relationship building between Black Widow and you know the Hulk Chris Banner and uh, I gotta admit I actually kind of liked it I don't know it was like just once you got these two together and the chemistry between them totally believable like it's like okay I, I can see this working out Somehow Scarlett Johansson is into Mark Ruffalo. You know, and her reasoning, I don't want to give it away exactly what her reasoning is, but it's basically the same as saying, you know, oh, I have nothing but hot friends and you're kind of like this ugly dude. It's something different than what I've been getting, you know, so. That's so fucked up. Cynical. That's so cynical. I'm just, I'm just being a cynic today. How long have I been talking here? Oh my god. Let's wrap this up, alright? The question you all want to know is, how does it stack up to the original? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it even worth seeing? Uh, well, it's absolutely worth seeing. Whether or not it's better than the first is a matter of opinion. Yours being, you know, whether or not you appreciated the... Because, basically, it boils down to... For a lot of you, the original is going to be the best because you're still riding that adrenaline rush of that first time, you know, the first time seeing Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and you know, all on the same screen together. Like, that was, it was such a novelty at the time because we had never seen that before. We never even thought it was going to be possible to do. Like, we never thought it was ever going to happen. And then he all of a sudden, here, one day, here it is. Hey, all these badass superheroes, one film, make it happen. Have fun. And now it's like, we get, we like, yeah, cool, we get this heroes back, but the novelty of, oh, oh, it's the first, no, that, that first time's gone. It's, it's like, you know. And some of you are going to keep chasing that dragon, you know, you'll, you'll hate on this film because it's not as good as the first one. But, 
as a standalone film, it's a great film. It's a great fun film. Like it was funny when it was supposed to be. Like Marvel has just been knocking it out of the park. I swear. I mean, granted, they don't have a perfect track record. I mean, not every film has been a complete winner. But as a whole, overall, yeah, they've got a great track record with me. Like, especially, oh my God, Daredevil. That is a review for another time. Um, Daredevil. Yeah. What was I talking about? No, oh, Avengers 2. Alright, so. Uh, <laughs> again, for me, my personal opinion, I actually, from a first time viewing, I'd have to watch it again. But from a first time viewing, the way I felt walking out of the theater, If Avengers is a 10, Avengers 2 is a 9.5 for me. I'm a sucker for sequels. Get over it. This is pretty much all I wanted to say about it. Uh, great film. If you, if you love Marvel, if you love the Avengers, uh, the, the first film, and you know just and when I say Marvel I mean Marvel Studios films not the X-Men films not the Fantastic no 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 not the Spider-Man movies no I'm talking about the ones since Iron Man that have been exclusively Marvel films like they're they're cinematic universe films if you love that series of films then you're absolutely gonna go see the Avengers and you're absolutely gonna have a great time watching it you know, don't hold it. Don't, don't 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 try not to do that. Okay, that's that's my recommendation to you. Try not to hold that candle to this to this, to the same film. It's like just look at the film on its own merit as a, as a, as an entirely separate film that's still connected to the first film you love. Still sever that tie just for just for the sake of seeing like like just that objectivity of as a standalone film. How do I feel about this? You're going to have a good time. I guarantee. Get it? Because Marvel, and then they're going to do a Gambit movie. But not Marvel, Marvel, Fox. And... I'm going to stop. Alright, this is your Big Black Guy Reviews. I'm a big black guy. Leave some comments, let me know what you think. And, you know, I'll see you guys next episode. Thank you for watching.